Hey, welcome back to the Art Corner. Had a lot go on since I saw you last, but we are back to paint, and I'm glad you're joining me today. I'm going to do a, an impressionistic barn painting today. I finished my London window box, and I'll bring it in and show you what it looks like after I age it. I want to give it some age, and I'll show you what that looks like. And I'll also show you the technique that we're going to use to age things. Um, but I do want to do a quick impressionistic barn painting. I'm going to use oil again today. I just love oil. It's my favorite medium. A little messy, uh, a little bit hard sometimes to control, but we're going to go for it. So the first thing, I've already sketched it. I've already sprayed it with our hairspray. So I'm going to start with my background first. And the picture I'm looking at is a famous painting, so I'm not going to sell this one. But you start back in the back with your background. I've got my barn here. i um, going to do a real iridescent cloud. Now, this is not going to be high detail, so don't expect it to look three-dimensional. This is going to be Impressionism, which I love Impressionism. My sister is a good Impressionist artist. But I want to get this rolling. I've got, I think I've got all the colors I need on my palette. I've got my thinner. I've got my linseed oil already on my plate, and I just kind of spread it all out on the plate all at the same time. And that, um, I'm going to get my sky blue. So let me mix some white in here. Come on, white. That blue is strong this morning. There we go. Let me get some more linseed oil. You do want to see a little sky in your background. I've got a medium-sized brush. With Impressionism, you can use bigger brushes on smaller things because you want it to be loose and you want it to be kind of free. It's not so wrapped up in detail that you're restricted by a small brush or a tiny little area. You can just really kind of free up your brushes with just a large loose brush stroke like this. I am holding my brush way back here. That also helps make the stroke very loose, very light like this. And then the pressure you apply also to your brush makes a big difference in how the paint's going to come on the canvas. So I am doing a very light pressure on my brush like this. Hope y'all having a wonderful spring. You'll see a lot of these paintings out on the road. These pictures, I mean, of old barns. And right now it is so green outside. I thought this one was appropriate because we've had perfect amount of rain and sun and everything is just beautiful outside. And it was kind of my inspiration for this. Plus, I needed to go quicker than the London window box. That was kind of long. Here we go. I am going to do another London painting, and we'll kind of do a little series of that. I want to do an old London graveyard. I took a picture while I was over there, and I love it. I don't have it developed yet. When I get it developed, we will do it in here. Just old, old graves, and they're behind a beautiful wrought iron fence. I know I'm really weird. I like old graveyards. Okay, I'm adding a little black because there's just a little blue down here and rather than waste it, I'm going to go ahead and get it on my painting like this. I hope you can see the little sketch. Now it's going to have lights and dark values in it to show depth, but um, so the sketch just sort of helps me be able to place everything quickly. All right, now here's my big tube of white that I recommend you have for everything. Big tube of white, you're gonna need it always. To blend, to soften, it just needs to be a big part of your supplies. So I'm gonna start a clean palette with white. If it gets mixed with anything, it's over with. So. Make sure you have one good clean palette of white. Now that I've got that rolling, I think what I'm going to try to do is 
get some of the trees placed behind the barn. And we'll do that by adding darks, dark green, a sort of an olive green, a dark green, and a yellow. And I'm going to put a few of the trees in here. Yellow ochre is a big part of this painting, too. And this is one of those little expandable palettes you can buy. They're like $2. These are pretty cool to have, especially if you're going to travel and paint. If you're going to do any plein air painting, I recommend you use that. All right. There are some trees. I'm just going to kind of place them back in here. There's some right here. Get this dark on here. This is a great color. It's kind of mossy green. And the trees kind of go up and behind this barn. I'm just going to place them and we'll add the darks necessary to finish them off. Here we go. Then I'm going to go ahead and place also a couple of the where the trees are going to go. There's one that kind of goes back here. Let's start from the bottom and go up and pull with your trees like that. Being very loose. And then I'll go back over these also with uh, some white to make them more realistic. I just kind of want to get everything placed. There we go. Let's not waste this black on my brush. Add it to my green back here. And we'll come forward with some lighter colors. See how loose I'm being? These are actually going to be trees and bushes, even though you can't see that yet. Here's the top of the barn, so I want to get a straight line and angle that off. Bring this down. Here we go. I hope you guys are enjoying this show, and I hope it either puts you to sleep or inspires you, one of the two. If you're watching it late at night, I hope it puts you to sleep. If you're sitting there with a palette, I hope it inspires you to paint some. Okay. There we go. I keep moving around because there's a little glare on my art reference. Here we go. I'm just going to hold it for a minute. Let's leave some blue up at the top, too, so you can see that sky. Here's the top of my barn. It's actually got moss on it, where it's probably been there for years and years. Here we go. Now, before I get too high with my clouds, what I'd like to do is get some white, a little bit of yellow, and I'm going to do a, a cloud up in here. I want to go ahead and place it before I get my trees all placed because it'll lose its way. I'm adding a little green to that. Isn't that weird? But this is going to be, I want this painting not to be bright and cheery, but I kind of want it to look old. Like you maybe found this in an antique shop somewhere. So I want to bring, get some brown. I'm using sienna and some white and yellow in this cloud. I don't want it to be uh, real bright and primary. I want it to look like you went shopping and found this. I love these old, crusty looking paintings. And that's what I want this to be. Now look, once again, I'm holding my brush way back here and I'm being real loose with my brush strokes and that helps dabbing off this excess paint. And let me just shove this around a little bit right up in here to short form a cloud. It can go off the canvas, that's all right. Way up here. Let's not cover up all our blue. But I'll tell you something else with clouds that's really good. Get your finger and just Shove that paint around. Oil is so wonderful to be shoved around. It doesn't mind at all. Now I'm going to add some more white to that cloud. And I'm going to get my finger. And I'm just going to sort of dab that white on there one more time. I'm going to add a few little irregular areas like this. There we go. Now, it's getting there. 
Let me keep working till I like it and then I'll stop. Don't ever give up, just keep working until you like it, okay? There we go, now, watch this. I'm gonna add a tiny little bit of black and blue along the bottom of this cloud just to give it, so your eye will be drawn to it and it won't get lost in your painting. That black will help that cloud show up a little bit. Just do it along the bottom, like it thought about having a rainstorm and changed its mind. Saw a beautiful rainbow, when was it? Saturday night in Bristol. Absolutely beautiful. Saw the purple in it. That's kind of hard to see sometimes. You see three colors, but it's, it's rare that you actually see the purple. And it was as clear as it could be. Here we go. Now, one more time, let me junk some white on there. And it's all, I like a little texture too, so I am really putting the paint to it. And oil will raise up and show texture like that. There we go. Now, got my cloud kind of placed. Now, I'll finish with my trees. Let me go back to my other brush. Dig in my black. Dig in my green. A little bit of yellow. And I'm gonna make the tops of these trees kind of like this. Just kind of really make them sort of fade in. I want it dark back in here because I'm going to do some light on top. There we go. Dark, dark. Now we want this to be real. There's a few little defined tops to that one tree, but the rest of them are not so defined. So I want to skiff those out. Those are a little too defined. Let's skip those out and make them not quite so. There we go. Now, I'm gonna brush on over in here. Get that tree behind that dense wood is behind that barn. Dark up in this area too. Now, I'm just looking at general areas, especially with Impressionism, just blocks of color. Here's the some blocks of uh, this black, blocks of black up here. This is a smaller canvas. So this little, a painting like this could be placed anywhere in your house, just even sitting on a table on an easel, one this size would be good for that. And you know, anytime you have a landscape, it goes with anything, any decor. And not having such bright colors helps it fit in anywhere as well. There we go. Now, once again, I'm gonna go just choppy with my paint like this. Just kind of choppy. And just kind of make the brush strokes irregular, not much detail to it at all. There we go. Over in here again, I'm just doing some more brush strokes like this. Very light. It's on top of my cloud because the cloud's behind. Staying in the same color palette, but we're going to change that in just a minute. Now, I'm going to add a little yellow to my green and start a little bit a brighter area right here. A few globs of that up in here. I want to keep that dark. Let me add some more back here. I want it to go back and that black paint helps that to go back. There we go. Now, while I've got 
dark on my brush here. I'm going to add a little more and I'm going to start some areas where there's also going to be some dark right in here. Now I think I can see that pretty good. I just work all over the place. This is my thinner. Use that to spread it out some. Don't be afraid of a big black hole. They're good for you. They're good for paintings. They show depth. Okay. Now, I'm going to change brushes, go with a cleaner angle brush, get all the paint off, and I'm going to start adding a little more color up in this tree. It's actually got kind of a um, okra in the green. Let's see. Let me get that to stick. There we go. Now, now we're rocking. Get in my white a little bit to soften that. There we go. Might as well go ahead and take it to the top up here. You want to hang it on a nail for a while. While it's hanging, have your edges painted. Yeah, it takes oil a while to, to dry before you can frame it. Actually, I recommend three months at least before you frame. Some people do it dry to the touch, but it can, you know, it just, it's just not dry. And it does take oil a good while to dry. So I recommend three months at least. Do you know what? Oil paintings look good just on canvas, sitting around. They really do. Here we go. Now. I'm going to get into some kind of a teal green if it'll come off. If your paint is dry on your palette, get a little thinner and scoot it around there. I actually got too much black on that. But get you a little bit of thinner and scoot that off until it comes up. Let me add some more of that. Sometimes your green will have a um, different color out here and you open it up and squirt it out. And it's a little shade different than that. So you'll learn as you paint which company has the colors you need. That's this teal. Now I'm going to add some yellow to it to tone it down. There we go. And I'm going to start using that over in here. Just to vary my trees a little bit. It's got a little blue in it. And I'm going to start kind of shoving that around to show some tree, tree clusters. Here we go. Like this. Take your brush and just kind of shove it. Turn it to the side like this and and rub it like this on, on the side and that helps get you some branches or some clusters I mean I'll do branches in a minute like that I'm still not happy with the black so I'm going to get some more black back in here there we go it's got to be deep there we go I tell you a real important key to painting too is just to relax don't be so uptight. There's a little pressure on this show for me because I'm on a time restraint and I know you guys are watching. But if you're alone and you're painting, just relax. Put on some good music. Uh, light you a candle. Whatever it takes to get you in a chilled out mood, you will do a lot better when you've got some freedom. Nobody's watching you. If you make a mistake, big deal. You can go back. It's just paint. Don't be afraid of it. There we go. But that's, I think it's so therapeutic and a lot of people are doing it now. A lot of people are painting. You don't have to be a professional artist to enjoy this. They're selling some things in some of the stores that look like my dog did them. So somebody got some therapy from doing that. 
If you can't paint, do it anyway. Just do it for the fun. Okay. I am cleaning off another one of these brushes to get down here to get some fresh, different green. I'm going to get into my white. I want to keep this white clear if I can. Now, let's see if we can't get the base of this barn. It's kind of this color, and then I'll shove it up and down in a minute. There we go. We're not really sure what that is. Maybe some fresh mowed grass in front of it. With Impressionism, your imagination kind of is the key because you don't really know what some of this stuff is. It's just there, and it looks good. And with Impressionism, what's cool about it, too, is it's not so high detail that you're intimidated. It's very loose. I'm going to add a little blue to that road. This is a road or maybe even a little stream in front of this barn. It's going to be at an angle like this. There we go. Comes on up. It's starting to come together already. Now, let's change brushes again. There we go. And I'm going to add a different color green again, getting into my teal. Going to get into some white, add some yellow to it, which brightens up that green quite a bit. So let's darken it down just a hair with some of my brownie stuff. And I want to get up under here, get on the edge of that path or whatever it is with some up and down strokes so that it looks like it might be some grass. Right here. See how loose? And we're not through with this yet, so don't give up on me. I'm kind of letting that dry a second. Then I'm going to start layering it. And I am even going to get in the road a little bit with some shading already. But while I'm here, just go ahead and maybe this is the shadow of the barn. I'm not sure, but it's dark right here on this road. So I want to put that dark in. There we go. Now, let's hit yellow, let's hit olive, let's hit a little green, and let's start with this grass here. All different kinds of mixture of something in this area. Got some real strong black, so I'm gonna turn my brush sideways and kind of avoid that for a little bit. Just hit the edges of it like this going up and down so you kind of know this is a yard. And if you do want to aid your painting more, get burn umber and a paper towel. Rub the paper towel in your burn umber after it's dry, like say a couple of weeks. Get you some paint thinner too, just or linseed oil, not paint thinner, linseed oil. And then just rub over your oil, it'll take it down two or three ages. It really, really helps a lot. I do it all the time. Burn Umber is your friend. You can do that on furniture too, by the way. If you've got a piece of furniture that's white and you want it to look antique cream, get Burn Umber, put it on a rag, Get you some mineral spirits, probably, on that. Rub it over your furniture. <laughs> Don't tell anybody I said that if it messes up, but it's really, Burn Umber will do a lot of beautiful aging. Getting into teal again. <clears throat> Doesn't matter that that's a little bright. I like that. I'm going to pull that down in here some, too. Now, let's keep our strokes not so even. I'm going to just start messing it up. Look, just kind of get it and just kind of mess this up some, okay? I want it to look like some major famous artist did this and he knew what he was doing. No 
Nobody questions messy stuff on famous art. Here we go. Now. There we go. I like that. Now, I'm going to start the barn. And what we'll do on that is get another brush, clean brush. And I'm noticing in this painting that I'm copying, you know, they just kind of got the paint on the just white. Hold your canvas, and this is where you will need to have it straight. Get your edge and just pull it. And I want to see leftover. I want to see rough lines. I want to see canvas holes, all that with the roof, okay? So just make it rough, but it does have to be straight. You do have to have your line straight to show that it is a piece of architecture. All right, watch. Just pull it. It's rough. There is crud in here, and that's what I want. I've got all kinds of leftover paint on my palette. I am just making this as pure white as I can, making it thick. And actually, I'd say this artist that, that did the painting I'm copying today probably used about three brush strokes with a big brush. But I'm just going to do it like this today. There's our edge. There's our roof. Now, there are shadows in the roof. So I'm going to get a little bit of black a little bit of blue and I'm going to get up here on the edge and I'm going to just make some shadow edges up here like this down in here too this makes it look like an old painting and this is I think impressionism a good way to describe it is look at something and squint your eyes just squint them as you're looking at it and that will help you create an impressionistic painting of what you're doing. So if you were going to squint your eyes, you would see these shadows, but they wouldn't be high detail. We'll get a little blue. And I'm very lightly shoving this paint around. Very lightly shoving this around. I'm going to get a little of my friend, Burn Umber, and I'm going to take it along the edges here. I don't have my very fav favorite brushes with me today. I'm actually painting on site somewhere, and so they are there. So I'm just using what I've got, and they're working fine. Sometimes when you do Impressionism, a cruddy brush is your best friend. Now, let's put that up. And let me see. I'm going to find a sharp brush, and this is why. We want to do that point. So I'm going to get in the black, and I'm just going to draw out the point of this barn like this. There's that little roof you see. Also, there is a super-duper dark line here. There we go. And the barn kind of ends right in here. I'm going to get those edges in. And I'm going to start with the color of the barn, which is a, it's kind of a pinky coral. So I'm using red and I'm using a little sienna. Red is angry, okay? I want you to always remember that red, when it blends with anything, dominates. So put it all by itself and make sure you deliberately blend it or everything you have will be pink, first of all. I'm going to add a little yellow. There we go. Add a little yellow and that gets that coral. We don't want it maroon. We want it kind of coral right here. And I'm going to go ahead and take it. There's a door right here. but. back in my red palette over here. There's a little bit of a highlight. I don't want to highlight it in white because it'll turn 
pink. So I'm highlighting it with my yellow. There is a highlight here where the sun's hitting the barn. So I'm leaving that kind of light. Then I'm gonna, there's my door. Here's the other part of the barn. And then there is a window right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that painted around. And that's it, the rest of it is barn. Back and forth. I've got paint all over the place. Here we go. There we go. I am going to add a little white, but I've already got so much blended that I don't think it'll matter. No, it's fine. Ooh, okay, I didn't mean to do that. I'll bring that on over. There we go, we're fine. There's a fence beside this barn and I don't want any red on it. There we go, there's the under part now. I'm just using leftover paint that's on my brush. I am gonna end my house about right there. It's ended about right here. Now that window has got a real strong shadow right here. Once again, you don't want to get real high detail, so I'm being really loose with my lines up and back and in and out, okay? You don't have to go straight up and down and show every board and every nail hole. As a matter of fact, in a minute, I'm going to distract some of this vivid color with just some junk, okay? There we go. Turning my brush every which way but loose. Holding it loose and going up and down. I'm going to change again, and I'm going to put the little window in right here. And I'm going to put my barn door. This might, I don't know, this is kind of a blue door. It might just be a large window. I'm not really sure what it is. But it's kind of a blue-white, and it's got some white crossing on it. Turning my brush sideways to get all that oil paint off. Now, let's get the window in. Sometimes it's just easier to change brushes than it is to clean a new one. Go back to my barn brush, get back in my red, and we want to get this top. There's not much red on this top at all. It's got more moss green on it. I guess where it's been in the woods so long. So I'm just going to get just a little bit of red to show it's part of the building. Okay, just a chunk here and there. There is a window. So let me get that pieced off. There we go. Here's the top of that window. Now, that's about as much red as I'm going to do. I'm going to get into some green with my red brush. Use a little bit of white. And this has just got tons of moss on it. So I'm going to use this, put moss all over top of this barn like this. Blend it with the red I just added, and it'll give it that perfect touch. I'm using an angle brush because we're getting into some corners here. They're good to draw with or get into, see I'm using the point and you can actually draw a little bit with that. Got to keep that roof line straight. There we go. That's real mossy. Now, let's, while we've got that on our brush, I'm going to go on down here and mess it up on the barn some. Don't think I'm crazy. This is kind of how Impressionism paintings look. They're just mossy and kind of cruddy. Look here, I'm going to get a lot of this green on this barn like this. I'm just turning my brush sideways. And it's not going to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit. There we go. Let's get this old cruddy green on this barn down here. The cruddier we make it, 
the more impressionistic it's going to look and the better I'm going to like it. All right. Now, that roof up on top of this barn is just green. But I'm going to add a little bit of black to it just to give it definition. Here we go. It's the top of that barn just kind of blends into the forest behind it, really. Okay. Let's add some black. Get up here and make some depth. Now, remember, we're not through with our trees. So you can get up here and just kind of crud around, okay? All right, let me soften that just a little. This olive palette has been good. can't get too much dark back here. This is a dense forest. I'll add a little lighter green on top in a minute. Okay, now, while I've got this dark on my brush, I'm gonna add some more crust to my barn. Under here is a really long, deep shadow. So I'm gonna bring it on down like this. Watch your roof line. You don't want to mess up your roof line. Bring it on down. Bring it on down. Here we go. I want some more crud on this barn. So I'm just going to kind of scuff some more paint on it. All right. Now let me scuff up here on the roof a little more. Believe it or not, there's quite a bit of blue on this roof. And I think it's probably just a highlight of the sky probably what the artist was trying to, to show is just a sky reflection. It's probably a tin roof. Okay. Now, let's get that window in. I'm just going to use not too much black. It's too much black. Let's get some white on there and just make it gray. I want it soft. Soften up that window. Now, I'm going to get a little tiny brush and do those lines. So let's get in our clean palette of white. And I'm going to stabilize my elbow because we are getting in some detail here. Pull those lines. Remember, it's Impressionism, so it doesn't have to be perfect. As a matter of fact, the credier the better. Here's our lines. My sister uses a palette knife a lot. And they really uh, help a lot with Impressionism. I've got one. I may try that. Let's see. There we go. Now, let's get your door outlined here with this cruddy little brush. I'm still going to crud up some of this, so don't, don't think we're through. All right. Because the looser and the cruddier, the better, okay? Now, one thing is for sure, there's a definite shadow that turns this way. So I want to get that black turned in. And I want it definitely dark, okay? And when you step back and look at your painting, like I've taught you to do before, step way back and look, you'll be glad you did the dark lines. They really help show dimension and realism. So make sure you get up, walk around, step way back. Sometimes I go to the back of the room and just take a look at what I've done and it helps with depth. It really does. Over here, let's start. There's a little fence of some sort here. Get in my white, just a little bit of gray. And let's just do some rough lines going straight up. This is some kind of little fence right here. We won't do a finished edge or anything. Just cruddy little fence right here, okay? I'm going to do some more green up in here, so don't panic. And there are also some posts on this little barn. 
So get into my white and into the black. Make me a little puddle of gray. And there's one here. There's one here. There's one here. And there's one here. Okay. Gets our little posts in. While I've got this good color on my brush, I'm going to crest up here a little more. Get rid of that harsh, dark line. Extend that roof out and make it a little thicker. Add a little shading here in the corner. Believe it or not, it's weird, but the, the really rough paintings that you do sell. They just seem to sell quicker than your detailed, your high detail stuff. Uh, people like it. They just like the shabby chic kind of look for a painting. Just seems like the crustier it is, the better it sells. There's also a shadow there, so doing a definite angle there. I'm going to add some dark and ground this place. Just like that. We've got a stone wall also while we're messing with these colors. Let me go ahead and get this stone wall started. I got too many palettes going. All right. Here's the top of it. It looks like the artist just got it one brush stroke and went boom. And then the rocks themselves are probably umber, okra, and maybe a little bit of white. And as you paint, you'll kind of recognize colors just by looking at them. I'm going to do some stones by just doing a smaller brush and just kind of showing some definition over here with some rock, okay? Let me get some white. You'll just be able to look at something and go, oh, that's got okra, it's got brown, that's got black, and you'll be able to pick those things out the more you paint. They say you should read 10 pages in a book every day. I think you should paint, you know, at least 30 minutes. It's not worth getting the stuff out unless you paint at least 30 minutes. If you're going to be a serious artist and you're really interested in it, find you a little spot, keep your things out, and use it. 30 minutes a day will help you get better and better. This little stone rock wall over here. Still, once again, we're impressionistic, so we're not getting into too much high detail, but I am scruffing in individual stones like this. And what I'll do is get even a smaller brush, if I can find one, here's one maybe, and I'll do a few real high detail black lines in between a couple of them like this, okay? Just a few of them though, not all of them. Just so you can tell, oh, that's a stone wall. There's a dark area here. And another way you can get a good impressionistic painting is, pa is copy someone else's painting. Because you're not going to be as detailed if you're copying a painting as if you were copying a photograph. It's a painting of a painting. So it's going to be a little, a little run down, a little bit more loose anyway. If it is someone else's work, though, you're not allowed to sell it. If it's registered to them, you can get in real trouble. So I don't recommend doing that. But you can paint it for you. Just don't profit from it. Okay. Now, the bottom of this, I've got to ground with some greenery. And it's going to be loose greenery right down here under this wall like this. Just some really straggly stuff going on there. I don't really like the yellow. Let me get into that teal again. There we go. And I'm just, as Bill says in art class, I'm dab, dab, and dabbing. 
here. Anybody that knows Bill knows what I'm talking about. Right up through here. Turning my, this is a cruddy brush. Keep your cruddy brushes for impressionism. Really fine tuned brushes are not gonna cut it for impressionism, okay? You gotta have a cruddy brush. Now, I'm gonna cruddy all the way up through here with this cruddy brush, just like this. Give it loose, give it old. Hey, just because it's loose doesn't mean it's easy necessarily. You've got to get that look by working hard to get that look, okay? I'm also going to cruddy up that door some. I'm just turning this brush sideways. You don't have to use a paintbrush for all this either. You can use paper towel, you can use saran wrap. Whatever it takes to get the look on the canvas. You can use your finger, you can use anything you want. Now, let me cruddy up that door and then I'm gonna finish the trees. I'm getting a real roof, uh, rough bristle brush right here. And I'm gonna get into the black a little bit. And I'm gonna just kinda dirty. That bristle brush doesn't have any fine there we go, it's just rough. You can hear it. There we go, see? I love it, it's just all cruddy. Now let's get up in the roof like that a little bit too. I'm going to add a few uh-oh looking things like that. Uh-oh. Is that supposed to be there? It is. We want it to look like, uh-oh, did I mess that up? I just want to give it some loose, unexpected little marks on this. Or it's not going to look real, it's not going to get the desired effect I want. So look, I'm going to give it some uh-oh marks is what I call them. It's just kind of a little area that you're not sure if it's supposed to be there or not. But these little areas are what really make it wonderful. Like this. I may spread a couple of those out, it's just paint. There we go. Still want some loose uh -ohs over here on top of that fence. There's a big loose uh-oh uh right up in here. Look here. It's probably weeds or something up in that bar. But the more uh-oh marks you have in this, the better it's going to look. There we go. You see what I'm doing? I don't want to lose that pole, so let me go back with the white just for a minute. And go ahead and bring that pole down. Just let, There we go. Don't want to lose that pole either. Make sure you can see them. There's a tree over here that's white too. While I've got my brush, I'll just put it in. Okay, there's a tree right up through here that's white. Put it in. These bristle brushes are great for impressionism. They're rough, they're stiff, they don't give much. And they'll just shove what you've got going on around a little bit, okay? I want a little bit of cruddy up in here. For sure, around that little fence. There we go. Now it's starting to look a little bit more impressionistic, okay? If you're going to copy another artist, make sure you do them well. Don't sell it, but make sure you do a good job. All right. Now I'm going to get up into the trees. I've let that background on them dry just a little bit. I want to do some pops of some little bolder colors so that this looks like it's in front, okay, of what we did before. These are kind of in front. There's a big glob of something here. Get into my blue again. This artist used a lot of blue. Not sure what that is, but it's just a glob of something right in there. There are tree 
clusters of leaves up in here. Don't cover your black because it's there to show depth. Now, there are a couple of trees that I want to show, and they're actually green, but I'm going to make them a little dark like that, okay? These go up here. There we go. Now. I'm getting into my white and some weird colors up in here. They're not necessarily green. They're kind of weird. They've got a little bit of uh, cream and a little okra. Don't know why. Watch your red, it'll take over. Don't show any of the ends of your branches. You want them covered up of your tree stops. You just don't want them, you don't want it to just be there. You want it to be covered up with some kind of a leaf cluster. There we go. This is where just the artistic liberty comes into play. You can just kind of play and, and, and work on it till you like it especially if it's going to be yours. These little pieces are good for your kitchen, just to sit around. You know, it looks kind of country. There we go, no start stops. Get that blended in good. Maybe some strong greens in there. A few more green back around that wall. There we go. Here, my bristle brush. Rough. Still see my cloud. I'm going to get rid of this excess paint and I'm going to shove around what I've got. See, there is not a lot of high detail to this painting, but you can tell what it is. You can tell what's around it. And it's a fast little impressionistic painting. Impressionism is beautiful. And it's a very sought after style that people love. Now I did not use a palette knife with this one, but a lot of people do because it gives you a rough, kind of an uncontrolled look. And I'm adding a little white to that so it stands out. This is in the front, whatever it is, okay. There we go. A little highlight on top of this wall. Like I say, in three months, well, actually three weeks, you can darken this with a little burnt umber and a little bit of linseed oil on a paper towel. Just like this, get your paper towel, rub it in to your burn umber like this, dip it in a little linseed oil, and you can darken any painting with that. See how that darkens that edge down? You can do that over your whole painting and it'll take it down three or four ages. Now I'm gonna add a few more uh-ohs, what are those? Right up in here. Get that tree back, okay. Make sure that tree's there. Make sure that pole's rough. Do we need any more uh-ohs? I don't think so, I think we're good on the uh-ohs. Maybe a little more on the roof up in here some, but there we go. There's your little rough impressionistic barn. I hope you've enjoyed our time today. I'm gonna to be sure and sign this just for me. 
Thank you for joining us and stay creative.